if you're an artist, you want to get hot before your deal. You don't want to have the label take all the credit for getting you hot. Now, sometimes, you know, you could you could parlay a single into a bigger thing. But Sexy Red did kind of that. From the single pound town and then the viral social media aspect of it, she got the right team around her to start marketing her without a big budget. Remember I keep telling y'all the guy behind all the digital shit for her is a guy that used to work at World Star, Jay. He's the guy who who is crafting you, you, you ever see like these ama- like even the, the, the Chief Keith thing. He's the guy doing it. Now, let me tell you why that's worth a lot. An artist like Sexy Red it like when it comes to digital marketing it could be over and up to a million or millions of dollars to try to keep that brand, you know, constantly growing, keep marketing it, this and third. Sexy Red, like a, a 6 9 has gotten it for marginal amount of, of, of the price. Almost damn near nothing. She knows how to manipulate social media and media outlets to post her for free. So again, she's someone came in the game has some association with the biggest artist in the world, Drake. Didn't really sign like some crazy deal yet. And also use the internet to fuel her shit so crazy. Now, I know you're probably saying, Ak, what the fuck you're, what you're saying got to do with this? The mentality behind her team is not to accept the big bag just for the easiest path. Her mentality, and again, I don't know if it's her, but it's definitely her team. Yo, we think we're smart enough. We're going to get the bigger bag by owning more and doing things as independently as we can. Okay, let's get to this. So, when any artist comes in the game, the biggest touring company is going to be Live Nation. Live Nation is going to try to have a deal with an artist. Hey, we're going to give you a, a, a tour deal. We want you to do 80 cities, all our venues, this amount. We're going to promote your shows. Trust me, they're going to be sold out. Trust me, Live Nation, is, and they're not gambling. They, they, if they give you the deal, they're going to make sure that shit is filled. However, you have to realize, and, and just to give you an, a, 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 like an idea of like how this works and why Live Nation is like, I think this got was it, no, no, it's actually Ticketmaster. Live Nation's almost they kind of have like a monopoly hold on a lot of shit. Uh, technically, they don't because even though they they own some of the venues, uh, I think I forgot who did like some arbitration that said there is competition in the market, so they're, they're not a monopoly anyway. Live Nation is gonna lowball you though. They're gonna. I don't know. Sexy Red should at least be getting a hundred to one hundred fifty thousand for a show. Now. Live Nation might say we're giving you eighty. Now keep in mind, when you're a Live Nation, you can say that. Uh, not only we're gonna give you eighty, we own the door, we own the liquor, we own the concession stands, we own the parking, we own. Um, everything with it so we're probably making a nice 8x off of what you're um what you're what we're paying you we're making 8x of that and we're basically we're playing with house money we're, we can't lose we just can't lose now what what a lot of artists especially if they feel like they have a close team around them is doing they're listening to other promoters so we talked about this company before AT entertainment they're coming with bigger bags Hey, how much Live Nation giving you? Oh, 80? Yo, we're going to give you 170 per show. Or 150, whatever, right? Most artists are going to turn it down because you don't want to say no to Live Nation. Right? When you say no to Live Nation... Um, wait, what are y'all talking about? When you say no to Live Nation, it's like you're saying no to the machine. So people, you know, a lot of people just want to be on the Ferris wheel and just want to be in the game more than they want to change the game or 
or own their shit. Like, you know what I mean? If you ever wonder why some of these guys don't go independent, like, it, it, it takes a lot. Anyway, long story short, Live Nation is beefing with AZ Entertainment. Anytime they go for a bidding war on an artist that picks AZ Entertainment, you always see slander or shit. For example, when Lil Baby went with AZ Entertainment and did a show, again, reportedly, actually not even reportedly, I got the real numbers because I talked to the niggas. They gave Baby a million dollars per show. Live Nation wouldn't give him more than a quarter million. No, no, 750,000. If you an artist, a lot of artists are gonna say, uh, well, I'm gonna rather go with a bigger company. They're gonna do all the promotion. Um, I want to get in bed with them because also when you're cool with Live Nation, they're just going to add you on to, it's just mad money. Like there's going to, so even if you're like, well, I'm taking less than I feel like I deserve, they're going to add you on to different shows for certain festivals that, you know, they're partners. And I think they're a partner with like Rolling Loud, like you're automatically going to be in that. But some artists are like, nah, I'm going to go a different route. They're not going to like that. They didn't like it when Lil Baby do, did it. By the way, I, I, even though I, I take credit, I take a lot of credit for clowning the shit out of Baby after he dissed me. Part of the um, the sauce or whatever that has been descended on Baby about him not being as hot anymore also comes from him crossing Live Nation. Trust me. This is what you as a fan... And I would imagine if you watch my streams, I want, I want smart fans. I want smart audience people. I want you to think about shit outside of what you see. Live Nation probably realized that Lil Baby turned down a $20 million deal with him. The arrogance of this motherfucking Negro. Okay, we're going to humble him. Not only we're going to put out, we're going to put through our little, they have their ways. We're going to put out that his tour is unsuccessful. How about we put that his career ain't going good? You know, the next time when Lil Baby's about a tour, what he's going to do? He ain't going to go with an, a, a third party independent promoter no more. He's going to go to Live Nation. And remember, I said they offered him like 750. You know what they're going to look at him and say? 400 for you, nigga. You learned your fucking lesson. 400. You need, good, you need to get back hot. We gonna put you in these 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 venues. We're gonna promote it the right way. Four hundred for you, bitch. That's how it works. So that's what's happened to Sexy Red. Sexy Red probably got offered more money. Went with AG AG Entertainment. Live Nation's like, where? You think you could get around us? You think you could fuck with? You think you could? You could still cop from this block and it's not mine. Exactly. So here's the reality of it. And, and let me break down touring slightly. Artists like Sexy Red, Moneybag Yo, they aren't huge ticket sellers on pre-sales and shit like that who's sexy res audience ratchet bitches baby mamas whores degenerates when you see 40 percent sold these are pre-sold tickets for every artist other than the ones who have sold out shows like every show is sold out they usually expect about 30 to 35% of their tickets to be sold at the gate. You know why? Yo, people don't like a lot a lot of times people don't have a lot of money to be like, uh, I'm gonna commit to buying a sexy red concert ticket for next month. So they'll wait till it's the day of. They'll be like, oh, that's the wave for today. All right, I'm gonna go buy it today. So I know 37% seems low, but it's a it's sexy red. You got to think about the artist. It's the same thing with a Dirk. 
you're gonna have walk-ups that's gonna uh, uh, um take up for a lot of percentage and as when you get closer to the show because the their fan base don't have a lot of disposable income so the sh the, the tour doesn't get sold out when it's three months out as soon as it gets announced yeah the shows kind of get sold out when oh she about to be in town this week all right people now start buying so again i agree with sexy red i don't think her tour is gonna be a failure and by the way we learned with the baby thing they did cancel some dates but baby's tour was was kind of successful so it, it, and by the way if, if you're wondering why does i'm not saying touring data is getting paid but it, it, it's they know the narrative that this comes with right they know the narrative uh just let y'all know people ain't buying the tickets which by the way 6.8 um k capacity on average do i see sexy red being able to sell 6500 tickets most cities yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely should probably bring people out yeah so i agree with her i agree with her and, but but what she's learning is that you know her way of the music business is going to come with resistance when you're going around major labels and you're going around major uh, uh, marketing teams like what i mean going around like you're not like it's like a checklist everybody got to get their money when, when, when you're gaming the system the system has to make an example out of you oh word you're not gonna come over here and and, and bust this money down with us oh you're just trying to get it for yourself all right we got you we got you oh you're not gonna come to live nation you going over there okay we got you let's start putting shit out so i agree with her i agree with her let's wait and see until we start seeing these concerts that nobody show up i'm not believing this yet i'm not believing this yet her tour was announced like about a week 